is full of conventional Hollywood cliches and recurring lackluster sequels. One critic has seen it all, who can provide you with all the movie news, opinions, and reviews that could very well save humanity as we know it. This is Libby's Movie Hunt, and now your host, Libby Hunt. Hello, welcome to Libby's Movie Hunt. I'm your host, Libby Hunt, along with Kevin E. Hey, Libby, how are you? Hi again. Good to so, be back. Back with our new lights. We're gonna. We we were hoping our sound and video worked out last week, but I, we think it did. We think so. We see. At yep. least you heard us. You may not have seen it that well. <laughs> At least we have the new lights. We have the Even new lights. If you, have, if you didn't see them last week, you could see them now. We're very happy. We're proud. <laughs> um, but happy Friday, everybody. It's summertime. Um, okay, last week we talked about the Tupac movie. Uh, what was it called? All Eyes on Me. All Eyes on Me. I've forgotten, and it's been a week. All Eyes on Me and Rough Night and My Cousin Rachel. And we, I, I, I wonder if y'all went to see, did you, Rafe, Rough Night, I wonder what people think. I'm just curious. I still haven't seen it, but I, I did go see Baywatch. Yeah, what'd you think? I probably should have seen Rough Night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Baywatch is okay. What were we thinking? It's you, okay. What'd you say when you left? You said you felt. It, it, I felt almost the same way I did after I saw Bad Teacher with Cameron Diaz. Right. Disappointed. Yeah. Like, like it, it had potential. It had characters that could have been funny, like mm-hmm. Justin Timberlake's funny, mm-hmm. Jason Siegel's funny, Cameron Diaz can mm-hmm. be funny, but none mm-hmm. of them were that funny. They weren't that funny. And that's how Baywatch was. Yeah. The Rock can be really funny. So can Zac Efron, but I just did, there weren't a lot of laughs. The, I wasn't bored. Didn't you? The laughs that worked for me were in Baywatch when The Rock kept referring to him as Backstreet Boys, One Direction. Yeah. Every that, single time there's Every a new single moniker. time it worked. Yeah. Didn't you think? Yeah, I was, was like, funny. that joke worked. But otherwise, mm, no. Um, but we both saw, or no, you did 47 meters. I saw 47 down. meters. You want to tell the audience kind of what it's about? Sure, it's about two girls who are on a vacation, and they hear from two local guys that they meet about this shark diving. They're drinking, having a good time, and get talked into it, so they go out on this boat. And they're sisters. Right, they're sisters, Kate and Lisa. Kate is uh, Mandy Moore. Mm -hmm. Lisa is the—or no, I have that backwards. Lisa's Mandy Moore. Uh Uh-huh. And Kate—I don't remember the actress's name. Claire Holt. That's right, that's right. Um— so they go on the boat with this guy, I think his, name, his character name is Taylor, played by Matthew Modine, who's the dive master. And he's not in it much. It was he's odd. He's not in it much. Uh-uh. Um, yeah, and basically, you know, they're going in a cage to dive with great white sharks, which I'm shocked the only plot element I found unbelievable is how easy it was to coerce them into doing this. Like I, That would have been one of those things where the next day I said, why did I agree to that? I'm not doing this. When Mandy Moore didn't want to go. Yeah. And she ends up being the brave one. Exactly. Kind of. Which is kind of formulaic, but it's right. all good. Um, anyway, shortly after going down, the cable snaps and they plunge 47 me- meters down to the bottom. Oh my gosh. And they're stuck down there trying to get back up. You have the guys on the boat and then there's other divers and they're basically waiting for the Coast Guard while trying not to run out of oxygen or be eaten alive by the world's most dangerous apex predator. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's pretty intense setup. You give better synopsis of movies <laughs> than I do. You, you do. you say it in a nutshell. Basically, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Do you... It got... Um, only 52% on Rotten Tomatoes. Which, it's, it's one of those weird ones where it fluctuated a ton. It's fluctuated. It, at one time, it was up to 77, uh, then it went down to 60-something, then it went back up, and now it's it's down in the rotten range. And I'm like, well, the fact yeah. that there's so many different mixed opinions, I always like that. Yeah. That's, that's a good You're so funny that you even know me. that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I've been watching it because this is a movie I was super excited about. Because you like shark movies. Yeah, the second I saw the trailer, I was like, ooh, this is going to be cool. Well, I saw it on a screening this week also, and... It was uh, with a packed crowd, and what was fun about watching it was because the shark is really good special effects. I think it's a real shark they're using. I mean, it looks like real shark footage. It's yeah. not. It, it's the exact opposite of what, and I still like this mm. movie too, The Shallows. I thought uh-huh. the shark looked faked a lot in that movie. But I loved but that movie. But that was movie. a cool movie, especially when the shark in that movie would breach the ocean surface. Uh-huh. It looked really fake. But yes. no, in this one, it always looks real. It looks always. like you're watching a segment from Shark Week or something. I know. So I was like, that was kind of good, but it... um. You're, I'm, I'm in the audience. I mean, you know, there wasn't a seat empty. People were screaming, you know, when the shark lunges or anything. So that made it fun. Right. Because they Their were... Their reactions are great. At night, full theater, people are... I screamed. I went, oh, yeah. like that, you know. Oh, it's such a great experience. So, Summer shark movie in the theater. Like, yeah, it's great. So I, you know, if you want to... Because like I, we were hoping It Comes a Night was going to be scary like that. It wasn't scary at all. I mean, but this is the good kind of scary. Not like you're going to have nightmares, just a shark coming at, you know, where you're like... Ah, I didn't see that coming. Right, exactly. A lot of jump out at you. Yeah. 
I give it popcorn worthy for sure. Oh, I'm gonna say it's major popcorn. Major worthy. popcorn worthy. It's super intense to me. One of the it, yeah, because there aren't that many things out right now that we can highly recommend, and I'd say it's good. And there are some, I mean, twists. And every time you think mm. things are starting to look up, of course it goes back down. I mean, there's one yeah. point they get the thing rewinched, the cable breaks again. Well, uh, and not spoiler alert, but kind of a dream sequence too. They won't know yes. what we're talking about, but I was like, that was surprising. Yes, that was... at some point they are able to send down some oxygen, yeah. but they say that you may get like uh, uh, nitrogen poisoning or something, which can cause you to hallucinate. Uh-huh. So they kind of do a little um, foreshadowing there. Right, that was interesting. And that was interesting, and th- that plays into the end, and it was really cool. But I thought those two actresses had to be underwater with ga- mass... Uh, you know, whatever those masks are called, the whole time. Yeah. For filming that. Because I'm pretty sure, right, they're like the, um, yeah, they're the full mm-hmm. uh, face wreck diving masks. So you can actually see their faces and they're able to speak. Right. Um, but And they could hear each other through a little mind. They could hear each other, right. But my only problem, and I probably made it very realistic, the movie, is it was very dark and murky looking because they were on the bottom. Like I would have them to light it a little very bit better. Very limited light, yeah. The lighting wasn't great. I no. would But that's... Which prob- was probably done intentionally, but Because it's, still- it's the bottom of the ocean. But I was like, I wanted to see... Yeah. I like... It, w- it would have been more visually interesting to see it better because there's right. a lot of barnacles floating around and... Like the short cage sequence in Jaws because it's only 10 feet under the boat, so mm-hmm. you can see it really well. But I mean, 47 meters down in the ocean is pretty, pretty deep. So it, it makes sense that the lighting is bad, but I, I do see what you mean because... You can kind of make out the central characters a lot of the time, but you can't really see anything, anything around else. them. Right. Which creates a creepy atmosphere. But... but then anytime they'd have to talk to the boat, they got to communicate with the boat, some, they would have to go up to a certain amount. They have amount to swim up. Yeah, to, 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 to 20 meters or 20 something. 20 meters, yeah. which I thought was interesting. Yeah. But then they'd go up, and how do you find your way back down? It just scared me to death. They, I don't understand why Matthew Modine was in it, though, because he's so... What is his? Was he the boat captain? I he's mean, he's the dive master, I believe, or the cat. Yeah, captain he was of just the boat. so underused. That was an odd. Yeah, he never even goes into the water. I know. I, <laughs> I, I would have because I love him as an actor. I would have loved to have seen him more. And was, then some. I'm going to throw out there just so that people know this. I'm not going to say who. I'm not going to spoil anything. But there are people that get eaten by sharks in this movie. Just so you know. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah like, that's true. So don't don't see it thinking it's like the shallows. Like oh nobody's going to yes. you know there are. But I forgot in the shallows there is a guy who gets eaten by it, a shark there is also. The one yeah. One or two? Uh, there's one guy. Two, you're two. right. The, one surfer the and the surf- guy going after mm-hmm. her stuff. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Um, I liked The Shallows better, but I, I highly, re- I, I do recommend this. The director, was it? Um, oh, uh, I forgot. I had it pulled up. and I. But I, I don't think he's anybody we really know. That no. surprised me. Um, um, what did he direct? It was some other. And I thought this was an interesting movie for Mandy Moore. Definitely. I mean, I didn't seen her in anything she's in, a long in that time. famous show tv show right now something about us or that everybody's this is a tear oh, jerker. this is us this is us that's that right I, I have not seen yet People i watched just, some of it no, and no, I, no, you no. didn't like it i was just real bored oh shoot i know I girlfriend just, loves it yeah people love it i need to i need to watch it um something that is really cool the director of this movie is uh directing the strangers part two which i'm really excited about Finally, a sequel to the with Strangers. Liv Tyler, Liv Tyler and Scott Speedman. Oh my gosh, I came across that on TV the other night. That was a creepy. That's movie. a really scary movie. That's a good. That's a nightmare. Like gives you nightmare yes. kind of movie. And that's one of those ones I always talk about with horror. That movie's totally rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, it's like a thirty percent. And to me, that's a great. Horror I liked film. it a lot. Who? So what? What was the connection there? Somebody directing uh, it? Johannes Roberts, the director. Uh, he's going to do forty-seven meters down. Is directing the Strangers Part Two. And does it say what else he's done? I didn't see. Notice he ha- doesn't have. A great resume. He's yeah. I haven't I haven't heard of a single other thing actually on his filmography. Uh, uh-huh. The other side of the door, storage twenty four, roadkill when evil calls. I don't know. Yeah, what it is. See? but they're horror, so he yeah. has you know some horror chops. And it, I just think it's interesting how directors get picked for things. You know yeah. how that works. Like like we said, the girl in Wonder Woman, which I loved, how. They picked this girl director who had done Monster with Charlize Theron, mm-hmm. which was so a departure from a big action. You know? Yeah, well, yeah, and the guy who directed Bad Santa 2 had never done a crude comedy before. I know. It's like, well, why did you pick that guy? I know. It's just, <laughs> I it's, get it. it's just interesting. but And I think it matters. It but. does. Sometimes you just don't know. I mean, whoever would have thought Michael Keaton would be a great Batman? I know. he was. He's my favorite Batman, by Me the too. Way. My favorite. So I wish he'd do it again. Um, okay, the other film that I saw and you did not see was Megan Levy. And here's where I'm confused about Rotten Tomatoes. You only introduced Rotten Tomatoes to me this year. I can't believe I've never known about it. Um, it got 81%. Pretty good. Certified yeah. fresh. Yeah. 
I left the movie. That's how bad it That's was. That's how bad it was. It has to be pretty bad for you to leave. I left. And maybe it had a good ending. I, I literally... <laughs> You'll never know. I'll never know. I'll never know. I left. It, it has Kate Mara, who I love. I, You know, I she was in The Martian, you know, House of Cards, Shooter. Uh, American Horror Story. Uh, just great actress. Edie Falco plays her mom. Oh, Brad, Bradley Carmel Whitford. Soprano. Yeah. Bradley Whitford from The West has Wing. Has a small part in it. Um, the... the the director I've never heard of, but basically it's the true story. Megan Levy, she is an officer. I don't know. I guess it's the army Marines, but she is in the dog unit and it's during the, you know, Gulf war. And she is given an unruly dog to help train Rex and takes and ends up, you know, falling in love with him and um, ha- like teaches him to behave. And what these, these, they go in and they sniff out bombs and they save people, these dogs. And, um, you know, so, Okay, I thought it's such a hit because people love dog Great movies. Great story, yeah. People love dog movies. And they ended up ha- having like 100 rescue missions. And then, then at the end, they're injured and but have to retire or whatever. But it was just, talk about TV quality. I mean, just made for TV quality. It just was. It, it just wasn't good, and it was boring. And that's, uh, yeah, I'm going to pull this up and see exactly how many top critics reviewed this because that's shocking to me. I got an about I was about 40 minutes into it, maybe lasted an hour, and it just was literally so because it could have been it, uh, just the lead up, I guess, to going over the war. I didn't there wasn't much of it. Her yeah, dog I mean, 61 into, reviews, 81 percent. I'm shocked, and the audience score is 86. No. I mean, you know, people are sucker for dog movies, though. They love that's a true. good dog and, and story, war, and I like yeah. dogs and war, but. No, there's really not much war shown. There is some with the dog, but the dog's not even that cute. I mean, it's, you know. <laughs> it's it a, is a problem. It's one of those killer dogs. Yeah. Um, I, I just give it a bag full of kernels. Bag full of kernels? Can you believe it? Total I can't bag believe full You haven't given a bag full of kernels yeah. in a while. I, did, I hated it. All right. Hated it. I can't recommend it at all. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. But, okay, th- let's get off of bad. So, there's something to kind of funny that happened though. So I'm going into it wasn't 47 meters. It was the um, All Eyes on Me Tupac movie last night, and I told you I'd share this. You don't know this story on air, and it was so funny. You know, I take food to movies because I don't really. I'm not a huge candy or popcorn person. I prefer candy. If I, everybody always is like, you go to all these movies, what do you eat? I take I take meals to movies <laughs> in my purse over there. I have a big purse, so I'm in the elevator at the Angelica. And literally, it's packed. And I'm, I think I had somebody with me. I went by myself. But I have this big, my purse is open. And this girl who was so cute looks down in it. And she's like, oh my God, you have a full meal in there. She goes, there you even have the good ice. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had a cup this big with the good, I call it Sonic, Sonic ice. ice. Yep. And I go, oh, go. I go, yeah. I'm going to be whipping out a full meal in the room. And I go, <laughs> I've been known to pull out tuna fish sandwiches and people turn around and go, do you smell tuna Where's that fish? coming from? Yeah. <laughs> but it was so funny. I got caught. It was so funny. That so, is funny. But see, you can't really do that being a guy. You, you can't, unless your girlfriend well, brings a big purse to One time, food. my brother is such a dope. He, he brought in a bunch, he, he wanted to sneak beer into the theater. Yeah. So he did. And, uh, but he brought glass bottles. And oh. first of all, I'm like, why would you not bring cans? Yes. Like, why would you, why, why glass bottles? But still, every time he liked it, like the <laughs> bottle cap coming off, and I'm just like, oh my God. Or you put it down and it rolls. That's exactly what, what happened. What happened, yeah. Yep, all of a sudden he tips it over and we're on one of those inclines and you it, can just hear it rolling, <laughs> rolling, rolling, rolling all nailed. the way. Like, yeah, you're a real smooth criminal. I know. They don't, well, they, they make all their money from the refreshments they don't want you to bring in food especially not beer these days because now they can charge you eight bucks for a beer at the movies now north park mall they used to let you buy the food at the food court and bring it into the movie but they stopped letting you do that a couple years ago oh they used to have the open food policy also at grapevine mill where i went a lot and dipped it don't do it because i'd walk in with my sonic bag with my burger yeah so I don't know. It's funny. <laughs> That's why I like Studio Movie Grills or Me too. Ralmo Draft House because you can get meals even though the food's not that good. It's not great. I just I like a meal. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, I guess that's all. So let me see what else is coming up. Uh, the Hero with Sam Elliott got 78% on Rotten Tomatoes. I cannot wait to see that. It's about an aging movie star. Oh, I like that. That's and cool. And he hadn't had a good hit in a while and he has a fling with Laura Prep. Is, you know, she was in um, that 70s show, and she's on Orange is the New Back. Oh, yeah, of course, the redhead. Yes. And his wife, Catherine Ross, you know, from Sundance and the... Oh, absolutely. Butch Cassidy and Sundance yeah. Kid. She's in it. That's so awesome. So I'm dying to see that. It sounds almost kind of like uh, 
crazy hard except for movies instead of uh-huh. music it does so i think that i i'm that played at the sundance film festival and did real well and i actually met sam you Elliott. met sam Elliott yes there. and he was so sweet that yummy just buttery dreamy voice of his <laughs> yeah. i mean he's like 80 he's gorgeous um the Book of Henry with Naomi Watts, it's based on a book, I believe, and Sarah Silverman, it, it only got 22% on Rotten Tomatoes, but it looks good to me. Yeah. Um, Letters from Baghdad got 83% on Rotten Tomatoes, and Tilda Swinton, she read lit- let- reads letters. I think that would be really good. Officers in Baghdad, so I think yeah. that'll, that'll be good. Those look like good ones. And then, of course, we talked about Cars 3 and Captain Underpants, which we haven't seen. Which but. I have not seen. And probably I'm not rushing to right. the theater to, to check out. So. But we're going to take a break. And um, Kevin's cute mom, Carol, who comes on sometimes and fills in for me, has maybe seen one or two of these movies and is going to um, come talk about them with her little son, her little fellow movie buff. So um, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Spoiler alert, more of Libby's Movie Hunt, coming soon. You're tuned into Libby's Movie Hunt. Welcome back to Libby's Movie Hunt on On Air Live. Libby had to step out for the second half of our show today. She is traveling. I am filling in. This is her co-host, Kevin E., and producer in studio, as always, with our favorite replacement, Carol Ebeling. How you doing? Hello, Kevin E. I guess I can call you Carol E. That's good. I like it. You like that better? Yeah, I've got a title. All right, we'll stick with that. Oh, don't need that music. There we go. All right, so uh, before the break, we were talking a little bit about 47 Meters Down and some other films, but now you and I are going to shift gears a bit. You have more movies to review. I do not. However, um, I do want to talk about some good summer films that are good to watch right now at home. That's like my new thing. Oh, good. What's out there and what's streaming and what you can watch from the comfort of your own living room when you're not out at the theater. But speaking of going to the theater... Uh, you are much more like Libby than I am when it comes to indie movies and the Angelica and uh, true. What's what, what's the other one? There's another one, the Magnolia. Magnolia. They yep. all kind of sound the same. Mm-hmm. Um, so you <laughs> went and did one of these indie flicks. Um, I, I tend to do I the did. big summer blockbusters. However, I yeah. just could not bring myself to do uh, Transformers. I just that's right. Really? Had to draw the line. I, no I, kidding. I, I've already done Pirates and and Wonder Woman and Fast and the Furious. <laughs> I, I I can't do. Uh, I, I, I thought you'd be all over Transformers. Isn't that the Mark Wahlberg? Yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, I think it's his second or third Mark Wahlberg yeah. one. Yeah, he's good in those. Um, yeah, he's always he good. he does those well. But I, I think those movies, yeah, just not for me. So you went and saw Beatrice for dinner or something. I, I forgot the name. Beatrice at dinner. At dinner, I was close. Yeah, um, it would have sounded more like a horror film if it was for. Dinner, oh, that's but. true. Yeah. Beatrice Fortin. Yeah, more like a <laughs> Hannibal Lecter spinoff yeah, or something. I, I thought the same thing. I did. All right, so give us a little background on the sure. plot, who stars in it, and sure. kind of what it's all about. Uh, it is Salma Hayek, John Lithgow, Connie Britton, great great actors. Uh, and I, I have to tell you, Kevin, I, I guess I'm just really out of it. It's getting great reviews. But I just... Certified Fresh di- on Rotten Tomatoes. I just didn't see it. I mean, I don't even think it was popcorn hull worthy. Nothing um, that appealed to you, huh? You know, if it hadn't only been seven fifty to go see it, I would have I would have gone out and demanded my money back. <laughs> Slow, plotting, formulaic, dreary, uh, about as subtle as a Mack truck. Okay, I'll give you the the bottom the, the synopsis. Um, Salma Hayek who is a pure, innocent, sweet, earth kind of person, healer and massage therapist, goes to her wealthy client, Connie Britton's house. Connie Britton is married to a very wealthy power broker. Okay, goes to her house to give her a massage right before the ladies' dinner party. Car breaks down, can't get anybody to come help her fix it. So the nice lady asks her if she'd like to stay for her dinner party. And that's that's. That's the beginning. That's the setup for the whole thing? Well, yes. Is it all in the same spot? 
all at the the wealthy Connie Britton's home overlooking the Pacific Ocean, L.A. So, so like a more boring version of a uh, phone booth. <laughs> Everyone's talking about. <laughs> no, no, I'll tell you the truth. I, I went in thinking, because I'd heard some things about it. I went in thinking it was going to be like um, Down and Out in Beverly Hills. You know, kind of an old theme, but it, it worked in Down and Out in Beverly Hills with Nick Nolte. Mm-hmm. Old movie, Richard Dreyfuss. The, the uh, homeless guy ends up moving in with Richard Dreyfuss, who's a wealthy, wealthy capitalist pig. <laughs> Naturally. And, and uh, the, the homeless guy ends up teaching the whole fam- straightening the whole family out and teaching them real values. And, you know, I thought, this is, this is going to be good. Entertaining. No. Lighthearted. No. Lighthearted. No. This was a very serious, dreary. John Lithgow is a billionaire who swallows up everything everywhere he goes, everyone and everything. He doesn't care about anything but success. So immediately you've got this, this gap. You know, it, it's a very politically co- political commentary. Huge gap between this capitalist pig and Selma Hayek. And she's immediately offended and turned off by this guy. And it's just a lot of close-ups of her intensely staring at him, a lot of uncomfortable situations where she just takes him on and has visions, fantasies of doing bad things to him, and it just plods on and on. (laughs) Some (laughs) very obvious and extreme predictability. Very heavy-handed on the political commentary, and I, I we get what she's saying. You know, but we, we're not that dumb. We don't have to be beat over the head with it. You know, this John Lithgow is a, is a laundry list of everything wrong with a billionaire capitalist. You Sounds know like a I'm cartoon saying. character. Yeah, very caricature. It's all the characters. Like Lex Luthor. <laughs> yeah. And I love Salma Hayek. I think she's terrific. I mean... Oh, who hasn't seen Frida and just see? I don't know that I've ever seen anything with it. I was particularly where I was particularly taken by her performance. Uh, well, she's great in, in Frida as, as Frida Kahlo and, and wonderful. So I was expecting, you know, her, and she's getting great acclaim for this role, which which leads me to think is she's starting to turn into like a Judy Dench and a Meryl Streep, where all she has to do is show up at the set, yep. and she's got a got a nomination, a nomination, you know. <laughs> so, I don't. I do not recommend it, especially at full price. I would say if you're interested, wait until it comes to Netflix and all those things. You can just watch it at home. So are you going to call <laughs> it uh, obviously not popcorn worthy, obviously not Oscar worthy? Would this be a half popped, or are you going to go full blown with our lowest rating, the bag full of kernels? Bag full of Ooh, kernels. Man, we don't see a lot of those. <laughs> no. They haven't seen one in a while. No. All right. Well, uh, that's the word on Beatrice at dinner. Beatrice which, needed to go home. Beatrice at dinner. <laughs> not one that I, I I was particularly excited to see, but um, it's not your. Cup you of had tea, high Kat. hopes, and it, it, it did not deliver. I was very excited. Um, just real quick, is there anything else in the theater you're considering seeing right now? You mentioned one yesterday, which I looked into. Oh, now I can't think of it. Something sick. Oh, the big sick. <laughs> the big sick. Yeah, that's getting great reviews. And I don't know much about it. I just know that it was getting it was uh, coming well, across my desk a lot in terms of popular uh, movies. Well, I don't either. You can look it up. But um, your dad, your dad came out of his office today and said that's on our list. So we're going to have to. And I got to tell you, I was kind of thinking about going to see the, going to see the Transformers movie and the one with the girls and the shark. Yeah, see that <laughs> that, that is actually worth worth your time. Oh, and another thing I wanted to mention real quick about what I was mentioned for uh, on the Beatrice for Dinner front. Yeah. Uh, it's a very uh, short runtime. It's only an 80 minute film. 80 minutes, yeah. And you're saying it feels like a 260 minute oh, film. Oh, I'm telling you. You know, um, well, I know this is one of uh, Libby's good on her good list, popcorn worthy, but the Jesse James, the assassination of Jesse James. Did she say, did she, Libby like that one? She likes that one. Oh, you're right, and you're uh, right, you're right. I, I, that was one of my worst, <laughs> most painful theater experiences ever. See, I do listen. I listen to the show, Kevin. You do. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I've i always thought that was probably the, the most, you know. The most the, b- brutal theater experience ever? <laughs> the biggest whooping. Definitely <laughs> mine. But this one, this 80 minutes felt like the assassination of Jesse James, which was like two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like, as far as the indie front goes, from Libby's reviews last weekend, this week, and yours, 
Stay away from the indies. Go for some of the more mass appeal type films that are out right there. I'm thinking. Stick with your 47 meters down in Wonder Woman for now until something comes along that really uh, exactly that really blows you there away. There has to be more coming along that's better. So speaking of summer movies, a lot of times this year, Cinemark, AMC, um, even Angelica will do it as well, release some popular summer films, summer blockbusters that you can go see in the theater. And these are usually like Jaws, Raiders of the Lost oh, Ark, yeah. Alien. Uh, We've done those. You and I have. I've done almost, <laughs> I've done almost all of them. Back to the Future will sure. be in there. And this year, I, I have to say, for lack of a better term, they kind of suck. Uh, really? N- none of the none of the ones that I would I would get excited about on this. Uh, so we have uh, none for of the Cinemarks Samos. this year. I couldn't find AMC. Maybe there is. If there's anyone out there who works for AMC and you have a summer classic series, please feel free to email us at libbysmoviehunt at gmail dot com because I could not find it. But Cinemarks classic series features yeah. some like it hot. Not one that I. That, not a big blockbuster <sighs> film that I'm going to go see in 2017. That wasn't one of my favorites. Watching it 35 years ago. Uh, and it's like how, how old? 60 it's years. Very old. <laughs> yeah, it came out in 1959. Marilyn uh, Monroe. Uh, Tony Curtis, just a real quick sideline. Tony Curtis used to say that Marilyn Monroe just was, he just could not stand her. He could barely work with her on that movie. That she was so rude and inconsiderate. She'd show up late and out of it, never knew her lines, which I thought was interesting. I don't find it surprising. No, not really. No, I, I think she might have had some. Yeah. might have had some issues. I, yeah, I, 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 go I, ahead. Some underlying. No, no problem at all. Um, <laughs> just trying to burn through quick. We're we're already sure. almost oh, out of yeah. time. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, whatever go. happened to Baby Jane? I'm not gonna go go see that. Uh, I remember seeing. I that like as Betty Dance and Joan Crawford movie. It and was pretty nowadays. scary. Yeah, <laughs> El Dorado. It's a good one. That's a pretty good one. I think I like. Um, the one that's exactly the same story. With uh, uh, Dean Martin instead yes, of Robert Mitchum? Yes, Rio I, Bravo? Rio Bravo. Rio Bravo. Rio Bravo is better. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington? I mean, unless I'm in a... Uh, I'm not a big Frank Capra fan because he's so heavy-handed on the schmaltz. That's when you watch in, like, political science class in yeah. school, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, so many that. This one is actually good 9 to 5. Great movie. I, I really that's enjoy it. That's a great it. movie. Uh, do I consider it synonymous with big summer blockbuster movies? Not no. really. Um, and then last but not least, and this is one, don't jump on me for this, The Godfather. I have no desire to go see this in, in the theater. In a summer series. Yeah. That but was this on. Is a, I sit at home one night and I have to be committed to it and I turn it on. Yeah. And, you know, it's not a, a summer go, it just didn't, it didn't fit at all for, for That me. was on TV this past week like four times on one of those stations, AMC or something. And I watched it. That's a, <laughs> I, sat, I can't resist. Well, I watched and, it. And I, I think when it comes to not just The Godfather, but these summer, summer movie classics in general, you're better off this summer watching your favorite ones at home. Yeah. And you have Shark Week, which is coming up pretty soon, and uh, 47 yeah. Meters Down is out. And if you have the shark fever Jaws. and want the summer blockbuster experience, definitely get Jaws. You can rent that online through almost any of them. I checked out Voodoo and whatnot. Life the Shallows. Apply. Oh, uh, the shallows. With Blake Lively, Good Shark movie came out last year. D- d- uh, did very well, but yeah. I cannot find where you can rent this movie online. Don't so if you me. happen to own a DVD copy of it, hang on to it, because I cannot yeah. figure out a way to rent it. But it's it's a good flick. Um, Deep Blue Sea, of course, great summer ridiculousness. That's, that's if you're, a great one. That's a really ridiculous If you're in the shark one. mood. <laughs> and then I think it's weird that you brought up Life Aquatic, because yeah. I consider that's that's like a... That would be like a, a summer flick to show at the Angelica. It's like because it's an indie Wes Anderson, you know. I love Wes Anderson and I love Life Aquatic and I love Bill Murray. So if they do like summer and indies, Angelica Houston's like my fave. They should put that over <laughs> at the Angelica. I think they should too. I wanted to bring up an indie coming out. Sure. Uh, that I completely forgot. Remember Jenny Slate, Marcel the Shell. I do. Who got kicked off SNL? Marcel the Shell shiz. Who on. was very good on it. Um, she's got a new movie coming out that looks pretty good. And I want to say, it's, is it Landline? I I'd kind of forgot here. about her. Yeah, so watch for that, but go ahead. Oh, no, that's pretty much it. Is that it? That's pretty much it, unless you have something <laughs> else you need to add. I'm bummed that we don't have any good summer movies to go see in the theater, but it's still early. Uh, maybe it's AMC early. will still release theirs. I mean, we are barely into, what, the first couple days of summer here, that's technically true. speaking. That's true. So there's still time. Uh, TMC also a lot of times will release his summer classics, and that's more where you would see the... Uh, Godfather, some like it, hot top movies, not in the AMC Summer yeah. Classic series. So I'm a little thrown off by it this year. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, like I said, if, you, if that's something you're into, you are best off doing it at home. Yeah. Unless you're trying to watch the shallows. Can't find it anywhere. Mm-hmm. But that's pretty much all the time that we have for Libby's Movie Hunt this oh. week. Mom, thanks so much for sitting. I'm sorry, Carol E., thank you so much for sitting in with us. It's always a pleasure to have thank you in you the Libby. studio. Thank you, Libby. And such, you honor me, my dear. <laughs> we'll see you guys next <laughs> week. And now is, I guess I'll, I'll use Libby's sign-off. Go enjoy the movies. Thank you, Kev.